First, full disclosure. I didn't buy this BNC model 865 microwave radio frequency signal generator. It was sent to me by the Berkeley Nucleonics Corporation free of charge for review. So let's review it. I've got mine in the portable compact case, which is a really sturdy aluminum case with a cast aluminum front and back plate and of course a handle to carry it. But usually you will <laughs> put it down this way and that case also comes with an external power brick. I'm not a fan of external power bricks, but you can also get it in a 19 inch case to uh, yeah, screw it into your rack or in a real desktop case uh, with a built-in power supply, I surmise. The back sports a whole slew of connectors and in due time we will talk about each and every one of them. For now we're just interested in the power connector where the plug from the external power brick goes in and that's lockable. So you cannot uh, unplug the power up and you accidentally yeah, pull the cable or something. And at the back you find also the power switch. We will put that on now and go back to the front. We're back at the front and I will cycle now the power and yeah, you get a booting message with uh, the model number. Mine is a 865-40, meaning it's a 40 gigahertz unit. Yeah, your firmware version, your serial number and the installed options. Yeah, we saw the GPIB connector at the back and the PE4. I will talk about that in a second. Anyway, here we are. And besides the rather large and bright display, uh, which is a touch screen by the way, uh, the only other things at the front are a rotary knob. I will show you the use in a second. And the RF output connector, which is for my Dash 40, 40 gigahertz model. Uh, 2.92 respectively K-type connector. There are lower frequency versions available and these have, I think, SMA connectors. Anyway, uh, let's connect the oscilloscope and yeah, play around a little bit. I connected the oscilloscope with a little adapter and the BNC cable with a 50 ohm terminator at the end. After you power up the unit, you'll find yourself in the continuous wave menu or CW menu. And you have basically three parameters here, frequency, power and phase. And that big red RF off button, which uh, when we touch it, will of course switch on the RF output. And yeah, get green RF on and we have the output signal from the unit on the scope. The first two parameters, frequency and power, are self-explanatory. And whenever you come about such numerical parameter, you can change them either using that keypad icon and enter a new value. And usually it gives you also different units, so you don't have to fumble around too much with a decimal point. So let's say we go to 200 megahertz and then we have of course a 200 megahertz sine wave on the scope. And the second parameter power, yeah, that's the output power here. And you can, yeah, alternatively uh, select a digit and then use the turn knob. So we can go up here to 20 dBs and I have to scale down on the scope so we can still see it. And you can dial that up to 30 dBm, but uh, 200 megahertz, 30 dBm, you get an error warning, unleveled. That is the full 30 dBm are not available in each frequency band. Yeah, you have to look into the specification to see what power level is available in what frequency band. Anyway, uh, 
let's turn that down to minus 20 dB and adjust the scope accordingly. Um, minus 20 dB is the lowest power setting without any additional option. Now that unit has the PE4 option installed, so I can turn that down to 60 minus 60 dBm. Uh, minus 60 dBm again is unleveled for my 200 megahertz here. Uh, look into the specification for that. But let's return to 0 dBm and adjust the scope and talk about that phase parameter here. But to do that, we'll need to have a look into the reference menu. Associated with the reference menu, you find two BNCs at the back, reference in and reference out. And when talking about reference, we are talking about the 100 megahertz often controlled crystal oscillator in that thing. So let's connect the scope to the reference out and yeah, we'll at least try to feed in an external reference through the reference in, but uh, yeah, that might not work out. More about that uh, in a second. The reference output of the unit is shown here on the scope as that red line and it's currently off, but you see there is a little bit going on here. That's just some leakage uh, through the output amplifier of the reference. Uh, we can ignore that. Let's switch it on to 100 megahertz and we get a signal here. Let me trigger on that. Okay, I've triggered the scope now to the reference signal and now I can show you what that continuous wave sweep parameter actually does. So if I adjust that here, you see that our yellow output signal changes phase in relation to the 100 megahertz reference frequency. And I can yeah, turn that up to 360 degrees, at which point we are back at zero. And you can use that to phase sync several units or other pieces of equipment when they are fed from the same reference. And of course you can take the reference from that unit and feed it into another unit. Let's go back to the reference and talk about reference source. So the reference in BNC on the back. And by the way, both BNC connectors have an impedance of output impedance of 50 ohms and of course the reference output I route to the oscilloscope is terminated there with 50 ohms. I temporarily switched off the channel of the scope showing the RF output simply to keep my sampling rate high enough for these 100 megahertz signals. The red line is now still our reference output of 100 megahertz, just a different time scale. And the blue line is a 10 megahertz signal I'm feeding into the reference input. And when I try now to yeah, use that as external 10 megahertz reference, it fails. It says log status not locked. Yeah, we can recheck that, not locked. The reason being, these 10 megahertz are not simply frequency multiplied up to 100 megahertz, but instead the internal open controlled crystal oscillator 100 megahertz tries to phase lock to that external 10 megahertz. And for that to happen, the external 10 megahertz have to be within 1.5 ppm. Uh, so plus minus 15 hertz. And since that signal comes from a simple, yeah, crystal oscillator controlled function generator, uh, yeah, no dice. Now I have a rather crude 100 megahertz signal I'm feeding 
into the external reference input and you see yeah uh, it's a little bit better also uh, when feeding an external 100 megahertz reference uh, in it completely replaces the internal 100 megahertz reference but it has still to be within yeah plus minus 100 ppm so the rest of the phase lock loop circuitry inside that thing will work so let's try that and yeah not nice but uh it's working uh let's go down with our output frequency also to 100 megahertz and switch the scope channel on again yeah it's working with a 100 megahertz external reference but uh, as mentioned before you would uh, do that only when you have a really really good uh, external reference so uh, ide ideally something better than just an open controlled crystal oscillator and that's it about the reference menu i guess uh, i'll reset everything and we uh, have a look at the sweep menu then i reconfigured the scope so we are triggering again on the rf output and it's time to move on to the sweep menu and let's start there with a frequency sweep uh, of course you have to enter a start frequency and a stop frequency and let's say here 100 megahertz as a start and 200 megahertz as a stop. There's a second submenu here numbered 2 for a sweep where you can enter first the number of yeah points. That's basically how many steps your sweep will have and the dwell time on each step so when we enter here for example we want to do a sweep in five steps and we want to dwell 250 milliseconds on each step and we switch the sweep on we are sweeping between 100 and 200 megahertz in five steps and staying 250 milliseconds on each step. You can in addition enter a delay or off time between each of the steps in your sweep. Let's say here also 250 milliseconds. Let me yeah reset that and there you see yeah it's flickering just but that's the oscilloscope. Uh, the signal goes off in between. Let me extend that to 500 milliseconds so we can see it a little bit clearer. Yeah, now you see it. It goes now for 500 milliseconds. The signal goes to zero between the single steps of your whole sweep. The level of your signal during a frequency sweep is still determined by the continuous wave menu setting. So if I go down here to, let's say, minus 10 dBm, yeah, your signal is attenuated and the sweep will be done with that signal level. And um, yeah, talking about signal levels, you also have the ability to do a power sweep. Instead of entering a start frequency and stop frequency, you enter a start power and a stop power. Minus 20 dBm is okay, but let's go here to 0 dBm. And the second submenu is here, the same of course, uh, dwell time, number of points, and delay off. And when we switch that on, we see with a constant frequency our level rising of the signal and in between the signal goes to zero and the frequency of the signal in that case is of course set here in the continuous wave menu so if we go here for example to yeah let's say 200 megahertz 
oops, sorry, 200 megahertz. We go back to our sweep. Then we, yeah, amplitude modulate, uh, yeah, step through uh, different signal levels at a 200 megahertz signal. That's it. Within that submenu, you also have the possibility to specify a number of repetitions. Currently, I have here the uh, check mark on infinite, so it repeats infinitely. But that only makes sense in conjunction with triggers. So we will have a look at triggers next. And when talking about triggers, we need, of course, the associated BNC connectors at the back, trigger in and trigger out. So one channel of my oscilloscope, which I previously used for the reference out, goes now to trigger out. And I will connect a trigger source here to the trigger in. And that goes also to the oscilloscope. I power cycled the unit while working at the connection, so everything is back to power on defaults. So 100 megahertz, 0 dB, continuous wave, and let's switch on the RF output and go to the trigger menu. And there we will start with the output submenu, because seeing what trigger signals come out of the unit will help us to understand what trigger signals we can feed into the unit. The first set of options you have here is the LF trigger out source and it's currently set at LF or low frequency generator. And if we switch the trigger output on, you see here a, <laughs> a very low frequency signal. Let me tune in the oscilloscope on that. And what you are getting out there is a very low frequency, uh, to be exact, a 400 hertz sine wave. Two volts peak to peak into a 50 ohm load at the termination in the oscilloscope and with a DC offset of about one volt. And I measured that also for high impedance, then it's two volts peak to peak with a DC offset of two volts. And yeah, that only means the trigger output has a 50 ohm impedance. The other options do absolutely nothing when you switch the trigger out BNC to the low frequency generator. Let's switch the trigger output BNC to the actual trigger output. And yeah, I will have now to configure some sweep to show you what you can get out of the unit. So give me a second. So I configured a power sweep with a frequency of 200 megahertz set in the continuous wave menu and the sweep itself goes from minus 20 dB to zero dBs and 50 milliseconds on time on each step of the sweep and I do two steps and delay between steps of time 50 milliseconds. And importantly, I have here selected one repetition and infinite is no longer selected. Let's review the trigger settings. And there I have, yeah, we did that already. Trigger output routed to the BNC output at the back. Trigger output mode is normal. And yeah, we talk about the trigger output polarity later. Anyway, let's go back to the sweep and switch it on again. And you see on the scope, what we are getting here are trigger signals at the beginning of each sweep. These trigger yeah, spikes are just one microsecond in width. So yeah, very, very short and at a, a logic signal level. So uh, into a 50 ohm termination, 2.5 volts. And uh, if you connect it, uh, yeah, with high impedance, five volts. The important thing here is you only get these trigger signals if you are not running here in infinite. If I run the sweep in or any sweep in infinite, 
yeah, you don't get a trigger signal. You have to use the the repetitions here and then and only then you get trigger outputs which you can sync um, any external equipment to the sweeps the unit is doing. If I for example here increase the number of repetitions to two then you see I only get yeah I get two repetitions of my two-point sweep within two trigger pulses. And that's with the yeah trigger output uh, to the BNC and trigger output mode normal. If I go to trigger output mode point and start my sweep again, then I get a trigger signal at each point at the start of each point of the sweep. Let's see what the last trigger option does for us. That would be RF signal valid and maybe I have to yeah fumble around with the sweep again we'll see. But you see here the trigger is now high most of the time and only goes down for a very short, very short period after each signal. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Sorry for the flickering, but it is a power sweep. Anyway, the RF signal valid goes low between transitions of the power level when there are so, uh, still some spikes and transients here on the signal. That is, the output signal of the generator is not absolutely clear and well it's self-explaining. RF signal valid. So while it's low the output signal of the unit is not valid and you can see it here. Anyway, let's move on to the next trigger option and that is yeah, trigger output polarity inverted and yeah, self-explanatory. Let me activate the sweep again. And then you see yeah, our all trigger outputs will be simply inverted. That's all. But we have another a third signal source we can route to the BNC trigger out at the back and that is the pulse video and I guess I will have to adjust the oscilloscope again to make that visible and for the pulse video also these trigger options have absolutely no meaning. So let's get back to my power sweep and yeah let me adjust the scope. And here we can see that that pulse video is basically just framing the single steps of our sweep. So it's high during a step when there is a signal and it goes low during the off times between our steps. That's all. So let's move on to the trigger input menu. I won't cover each and every option in the trigger input menu or <laughs> all combinations of those that would be uh, 48 different settings and uh, yeah we don't have the time. Instead let's uh, review quickly what the standard setting is. So uh, you have a trigger type normal meaning each trigger pulse will initiate a full sweep trigger source is off or in other words the trigger signals are generated internally. Trigger in init mode is continuous so yeah trigger 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 everything runs forever and yeah trigger edge uh, is probably mood for <laughs> the internal trigger source uh, but yeah it's rising. Now let's move on to the interesting stuff and that is using an external trigger source. Uh, let me configure something here on the scope. 
Of course, I didn't just configure the oscilloscope. I'm also now feeding an external trigger source into the trigger in BNC at the back. And that signal is shown here at the as a red trace on the scope. And you see it's just some pulses with a certain frequency. Now, if we change our trigger source to external, and maybe I haven't mentioned it, but if you have these radio button menus, uh, don't try to hit a single button, that won't work. Just touch the whole area and the button will simply scroll through. So we want external source and trigger type normal. So each trigger pulse should initiate a whole sweep and yeah, on the rising edge. Uh, we won't talk about that anymore. Uh, trigger edge, rising, falling, self-explanatory. Let's go to the sweep menu and switch on our sweep. And there it is. And you see the next sweep only starts when the next trigger signal comes along. Uh, maybe I can, uh, yeah, push them a little bit more apart. I'm doing this here off screen. Yeah, you can probably see the effect. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's one option for the external trigger. Another option would be to use the triggered pointwise, that is to advance in our sweep one step each time we send a trigger pulse. Let's try that. Go back to the sweep and turn it on. And yeah, I probably should yeah align these a little bit closer together. Just give me a sec. Yeah, now we have a stable picture and you see each time we get a trigger impulse, we advance one step in our sweep. Uh, please note that the uh, delay off time we specify is of course mood because yeah, after the on, the dwell time, the signal goes off until it gets the next external trigger impulse and then continues with the next step in the sweep. There is a third option for the internal tr external trigger source and that's gated. Uh, to demonstrate that I will have to adjust my external trigger signal. Give me a second. My external trigger signal is now more like a square wave with a certain duty cycle. So let's switch on the sweep and see what that does. As you can see, the steps of the sweep, so step one, two, one, two, one, two, are only performed while, or started, <laughs> to be more exact, while our external trigger, that is gate signal, is high. We are in fact not masking uh, the RF output or gating the RF output. We are gating the internal trigger pulses generated by the unit for the sweeps. And if I increase the duty cycle just a wee bit, or not a wee bit, quite a wee bit, uh, yeah, any second now, one more, yeah, then you see he can uh, execute one, two, three, four steps within, yeah, that time window we defined by that external trigger uh, slash gate. And that was all I wanted to show you in regards to the trigger in menu, at least for this video in part two, there will be more stuff about, yeah, external triggers and such, and yeah, triggering via the bus, so LAN, USB, etc., and triggering uh, via a key, but I think it's enough for this video. Moving on to the configuration menu. 
And there you have first the presets and it, yeah, it's self-explanatory. I could, for example, now save that into the index number nine. And I think, how many can I enter? Nine, nine, nine. So uh, I could now save the whole settings of the unit, the current settings into memory index 999. Let's do that. Okay. And then when I power cycle the unit, and I will do a cut at that point. Everything is back to defaults. Yeah, our uh, sweep is gone and our trigger is uh, back to normal. But if I go to configuration and then select setting 999 and say load, everything comes back on. Okay. And uh, you can also load the, the factory defaults and you can completely sanitize everything you have stored in memory. We won't talk today about the communications menu. Uh, yeah, that's the network LAN communication and the GPIB address communication. Uh, that's for, yeah, the second part uh, using that unit remotely. Display uh, is just a little <laughs> fail safe. So you can uh, set your device control mode between local and remote. So I can use the touch screen and control the thing via LAN or USB or GPIB, or I can say remote only. So nobody in the lab, uh, yeah, when this is centrally controlled will uh, mess things up. Okay, let's leave that at local and remote for now. Info, uh, basically the same information you already seen uh, when booting the device. So yeah, the model number 865-40, 40 gigahertz, firmware version, serial number, and the options installed. And of course, there is a test. To be more specific, a self-test and we can start that and it doesn't take too long. Oh, I lost a little bit of uh, my camera here. I got a moye, uh, worse than normal, but uh, you can see what's going on and it should be over in a few seconds. Yeah, self-test passed successfully. And after you do a self-test, uh, yeah, you better go back to your presets and uh, load your stuff again and yeah, you're back in business. That's it. Before I conclude the video, I want to point out that empty space here. <laughs> there would be another menu, the modulation menu, but modulation is an option for the model 865 and uh, it's not installed on mine. Anyway, you got frequency modulation, amplitude modulation, phase modulation, and pulse modulation. And there are, of course, two more BNCs in the back where you can feed in either the AM, FM, and phase modulation or a pulse modulation signal. Though I think uh, you can also do some internal modulation stuff without external modulation sources. And by the way, we covered all the BNCs now on the back and I haven't talked about, yeah, USB LAN and um, that's also optional GPIB connector, but that I will also defer to, yeah, the second part of that review. My thoughts so far. Uh, Anyway, first, uh, yeah, excuse the subpar quality of the video when I was filming uh, side by side the black oscilloscope screen and this very nice and bright touch screen here in the Model 865. Uh, that was uh, too much of a strain for my camera. Obviously, you saw more uh, patterns and uh, 
or kind of stuff and uneven illumination. That was all my camera, uh, not the display. And yeah, we haven't seen that in the video, but if you don't do uh, anything for a while, then the display dims down a little bit. Um, and it doesn't show Mori patterns in real life. Uh, let's bright it up again so you have a nice and clear view of it. Um, yeah, where was I? Um, nice display and also the touch functionality is okay. There was really some uh, thought put into uh, the design of that so that even somebody with a uh, short, uh, thick, rubby finger like me, who has usually problems uh, using the keyboard on his uh, iPhone, in at least in portrait mode, uh, yeah, can use it. And uh, the own, yeah, it's a good design. Um, I like that they, yeah, besides the touch screen, uh, just added, uh, yeah, a turn knob that makes uh, a lot of operations easier. But uh, yeah, that's only the user interface. Um, the inner values of that thing, um, I cannot really fathom or test. Uh, yeah, we all know this goes up to uh, 24 gigahertz. Uh, <laughs> that's about two orders of magnitude, uh, above everything my equipment can handle. Um, I have though uh, bought some little radar modules and uh, yeah, when I come to it, uh, I will play around with uh, some signals uh, generated by this model 865 signal generator and some Doppler and other radar modules and we'll see what happens. But that's not part of the review. Um, functionality wise, uh, I'm really impressed, uh, especially, okay, you have continuous wave, uh, the phase adjustment, so you can really uh, synchronize multiple units or other equipment with, uh, yeah, f uh, with the phase output of that thing. Sweep was wonderful, everything you need uh, for frequency and power sweeps. So no problem there. Uh, reference input, uh, yeah. Um, maybe uh, 10 megahertz, uh, yeah, reference out. But you know, that's really nitpicking. Uh, you've got all you ever need. Uh, Trigger, I was very impressed by the uh, trigger out stuff. That is really comprehensive. Uh, you can basically use the trigger out to sync almost any kind of equipment to the sweeps done by the unit. Um, yeah, configuration, there's also nothing missing and uh, they kept it simple and I liked it. Uh, I, I, I kind of hate it when you go into configuration and then you have uh, two dozen options and you have to dive into uh, two submenus to get to the point where you can actually, yeah, for example, uh, disable local user inputs. Uh, not my thing. So yeah, that's okay. That said, uh, looking into the manual and uh, yeah, communicating with a very accommodating technician at BNC, I got the impression that you cannot do everything, uh, cannot reach every functionality the unit provides via the local user interface. There seem to be some stuff that you can only do if you control it remotely with uh, the provided software. But we will see about that in the second part of the review where I will actually use the software to remotely control that thing. Till then, 
And by the way, these were the different signal sources I used to feed into the trigger input and into the referee input. Uh, so, uh, till then, bye.